Hello and welcome to our broadcast. What a wonderful day this is. A day to be alive, a day that Jesus is Lord, Savior, Healer, Redeemer. Man, what a day to be alive. The Bible says that we can live in the kingdom for such a time as this, that, that all things are, are coming to an end um, sometime soon. We know Jesus is gonna return. I just heard somebody say recently, yeah, I've heard that all my life. Jesus is coming soon, Jesus is coming soon. But you know, there is coming a day. In fact, the Bible says, that during this day there will be people saying those very things. Well, you know, he's, yeah, I've always heard he's coming, he's coming. And then they'll just com get complacent in their lives, lackadaisical in their lives, and not really walk and live by faith and live for the Lord. Listen, today, man, we need to be living for the Lord more than ever. It is a good day to be alive. Great things happening in the body of Christ around the world. Oh yeah, we know the Bible said things are gonna wax worse and worse. What does that mean? We're gonna see a lot more corruption a lot more evil and wicked things. We're going to see people where, where they don't know the difference from right and wrong and they call uh, things that are wrong, they call them right, they call them truth. We're going to see all that and we're seeing that in our government everywhere else today. But thank God, God is moving today like never before. Thank God he's using our president right now to help the church and to help Christians and to help the body of Christ. Man, I'll tell you what, it's a great day to be alive. So welcome to Limitless Life where God takes all the limits off. I am Larry Hutton and I am blessed and thrilled to have you with me. You know, I'm just a happy guy because I'm always keeping my eyes on Jesus. I could be just like anybody else in the world. I could be depressed, I could be stressed, I could be uptight, I could be full of anxiety, full of fear, panic attack. I could have all of that operating in my life as if I allowed it to because you can get your eyes off of Jesus and onto everything around you and they become magnified. Have you ever thought of what it means when the scripture says to magnify the Lord, magnify Him? Well, if you look at, up at the word magnify, it means to make something appear bigger. So when you magnify the Lord, you're not changing Him. He's not getting any bigger. He's already big. <laughs> You're, what you're doing is you're changing the perspective that you have of him in your eyes. That's what you do with a magnifying glass. You can take a magnifying glass and you can hold it over things and sure enough, boy, it makes them appear bigger. Now they're really not any bigger, but they're bigger in your eyes. And that's what we do when we magnify the Lord. But see, when Christians magnify their problems and magnify their tests and their trials and their hardships, it just makes them appear bigger. And all of a sudden you lose sight of who really is big in your life. And that's Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Praise God. Well, let's get back into our series that we've been doing now for Gosh, this is for over six weeks. This is our seventh week now that we've been doing series that I call Believe for Great Things. And of course, when I use the word believe, remember we found out in the New Testament, the word believe and faith is used like 549 times. That is just a, a mind boggling amount right there. 549 times the word either believe or faith uh, the Greek word pistis, and then the, the, one, the root word that it comes from, it's used 549 times. So that means God wants us to believe. He wants us to have faith in God, as Jesus said in Mark 11, 22. So we, we started this series called Belief for Great Things. Why? Because we serve a great God and we're in Him and He's in us. Greater is He, greater is He that is in us than he that's in the world. So we can believe for great things because there's nothing the devil can do that is greater than what God can do. Man, that's a powerful statement right there. I'm going to say that. I might, I might get on Twitter after I get off the TV today and, and tweet that one. There is nothing the devil can do that is greater than what our God can do. Not even close, as a matter of fact. He already tried that a long time ago up in heaven, and he got thrown out of heaven. He lost his, his light. He lost his glory. He lost his stance in heaven. And he, like a lightning bolt, Jesus said, like a lightning bolt from heaven. In Luke, Luke 10, it says he was thrown out of heaven. And you know what happens to a lightning bolt? Boy, it's really bright when it starts. 
I'm sure because he had all, of, he was a bright morning star, you know, I mean, he was, he, he shone for Jesus, shone for the glory of God at the throne of God when, when he was Lucifer. But boy, when he got booted out of heaven, thrown out of heaven, that lightning bolt became dark. <laughs> that's what happened to Satan. So now we serve a God that's greater, much greater. Now, when, before we were born again, the Bible tells us that by default, everybody is serving the God of this world called Satan, uh, the devil, the wicked one, the evil one, the deceiver, the liar. He goes by a lot of different names. But uh, we serve, once we get born again, we serve the living God, the, the God that's full of life, the God that's full of light, the God that's full of health, the God that's full of financial blessing, the God that's full of peace, the God that's full of wisdom, the God that's full of love, the God that's full of joy, and you could just keep going on and on with everything that's part of life. That's the God we serve. And because of that, we get to live that kind of life here on planet Earth. We don't have to wait till we get to the sweet by and by. When we get born again, or you could say it this way, when we get born from above, then we become new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all has come new. And now we get to not have to wait till we get to heaven because we now have eternal life abiding in us. The moment you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, eternal life is imparted to you. The real you. I'm talking about your spirit, man. Now, your soul hasn't changed and your body hasn't changed. you got to renew your mind, and then you got to put your body under and, and take control and authority over it. But your spirit, man, is complete in him. I mean, the fullness of God is in you when you're, when you're born again. And so I, I get so excited just thinking about this because that's why I'm a happy man. That's why you've heard people say, I'm a happy camper, man. He is one happy camper, you know? Well, that's because I camp in the Jesus camp. That's because I camp in, in God's kingdom where I, my citizenship, the Bible says in Hebrews that our citizenship is in heaven. And the Bible says that the government, remember Isaiah 9, 6, or Isaiah 9, that the government is on Jesus' shoulder. So we're part of a, of a country called heaven that is never going to pass away. This earth and everything else is going to pass away. And then we're part of a government. Jesus is the head of God's government, uh, and it's never going to pass away. There will be no end, Isaiah, sec, uh, Isaiah says. So that's why I'm happy. That's why I get excited about the things of God. That's why I love sharing. Uh, that's why we called this program Limitless, Limitless Life, because that's, that's the life God wants us to live. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I've told you that many times. So let's get back into what we've been discussing. Believe for great things. Believe, that means have faith in God that great things have happened, are happening, and are going to happen. Amen. Uh, we've been using Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 and 3 that says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So if we're looking to Jesus, then he can start our faith, he can work on our faith, and he can finish our faith. He's the beginning and the end and everything in between of our faith. And then the next verse, third verse says, consider him. The end of the verse says, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. So lest your faith gets shut down and you quit believing and you want to give up and quit and throw the towel in on life. That's what happens when you don't look to Jesus and you don't consider him more than you consider your problems. If you're looking to your problems instead of considering Jesus, then Hebrews 12, 3 says you will faint and you will get weary and you will give up and quit and your faith won't work. You won't be believing for great things, even though you're a Christian and you should be because the greater one is in you on all things are possible to him that believes. When we believe, when we use our faith in God, it takes the realm of impossibility out of the picture. All things are possible. Unless you want to say, uh, it's impossible for me to lie. Well, you know what? As a child of God, it's impossible for me to lie. I have to make a choice. I don't mean it's not possible as far as I could make a choice, but because I'm in God, it's impossible for God to lie. So I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah, I could do it, 
where God can't. It's impossible for God. So I understand what you're saying, what, what you might be thinking there. But the impossibility realm is my point. With God, all things are possible. Yes, you can lie. Yes, you can cheat. Yes, you can steal. Yes, you can do all those things. But I'm talking about all things in God's realm become possible. Health, wealth, peace, joy, heavenly marriages, every good thing that is in Christ is available to us because we're in Christ. Man. So we're going to look to Jesus. We're going to keep, we've already, we've already spent a lot of time, like in Hebrews, we went through a number of people that had talked about by faith, Enoch did this and by faith, Abraham and by faith, Sarah and by faith, Noah and by faith, David. And, and we looked at a lot of different people because if we're going to believe for great things and we, we looked at those people and they were under the old covenant and they believe God for great things, how much more can we believe for great things? And then I, I gave you my definition of faith when we're talking about believing God, you know, the definition of faith. I said it is, in essence, a belief in God, in His Word, and in His ways that persuades us to believe and say and do everything God says all the time. In other words, when things are good and when things are bad, I'm going to do things regardless of what things look like. In other words, I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to believe God. I, I'm fully persuaded that what God said He's able to do. And, and so even in the face of contradictory circumstances, I'm going to believe God. So my definition of faith in essence is a belief in God, His Word, and His ways that persuades us to believe and say and do everything God says even in the face of contradictory circumstances. Or in other words, no matter what it looks like, regardless of the situations. Glory to God. And so then we've, uh, the la la last week actually, we looked at 15 different things where the Bible says pleases God because we found out without believing God or without faith, it's impossible to please Him. And so all of us want to please God. So we went through 15 different things because I, I went through Genesis to Revelation and I found 15 things. Now there may be more, I just didn't find them yet. Uh, so if you find more, that's great. But here's a short, very short list through the entire Bible, only 15. And if you happen to find a couple more, it's still a very short list. But 15 things that the Bible says that please God or that bring Him pleasure. And so we looked at those because if they please God and without faith it's impossible to please Him, then we can use our faith to do those things or what, however apply them to our life so that we please God. And then the last couple weeks as well, we've gone over 30 reasons uh, why faith is so important. Why is it so important to believe God for great things? And so we went through many, many scriptures of each one of those reasons, 30 reasons why we need to be believing God for great things and why faith is so important in our lives. And then at the end of our last program, I made the statement that living by faith now is more important than ever. Let me show you what Jude says. We quoted a couple things there and then uh, told you I'd be picking up this, this particular program. Let's read in Jude. There's only one chapter in Jude, but let's start in verse number one. Jude 1.1 1, 1, uh, Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. Notice who it's written to. To those who are called, sanctified by God and preserved in Jesus. Well, that's you and me, every believer, we are called. Then it says in verse 2, Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, verse 3, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary. Now watch this. He's writing to Christians. I found it necessary to write you to exhort you. You know the word exhort means, listen, I'm really encouraging you. I am just really being strong about what I'm saying that I want you to put to your remembrance. I want to put, stir you up. I want to remind you. So that's what he's talking about, exhorting you. I'm writing you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith. Contend, you need to underline that phrase, contend earnestly for the faith, which was once uh, for all, once for all, delivered to the saints. And of course, that was through the Lord Jesus, praise God. It was once for all. So he was the one sacrifice that was once, didn't need to be done again and again, month after month, year after year, like under the old covenant sacrifices, but once 
it was, he was sacrificed. And then it was for all, for all mankind. So at any point, a sinner, anywhere down the line now or years later before Jesus comes, a sinner can call on Jesus. And because of Jesus' sacrifice for all, then it's God's will to save them. No matter who they are, no matter what they've done, no matter how bad of a sinner and how terrible things they've done, if they call on Jesus, they are part of the all. So once for all delivered for the saints. Four, verse four says, certain men have crept in unnoticed. Now watch this. Long ago were marked out for this condemnation ungodly men who turned the grace of our God. So now he's talking about grace. We know it's talking about, of course, this is written to New Testament Christians. So under the new covenant, we're under grace. Who turned the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, for time's sake, skip down to verse 11. Woe to them. Woe to them. They're going to face judgment. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and have run greedily in the air of Balaam for profit. Eh, skip down to verse 16. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. In other words, they're trying to flatter people to get people to follow them. But you, beloved, verse 17, look at this. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. This is talking about the day you and I are walking in now. They're, these are uh, sensual persons who cause divisions. They don't have the Spirit of God. But you, verse 20, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Mm. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. Of course, that's talking about praying in tongues or praying in an unknown tongue or praying what I call a heavenly tongue. Uh, I used to be against that growing up in the, the uh, denominational church and all. I was against tongue. I used to tell people, oh, that tongues is of the devil. Well, if tongues speaking in tongues is of the devil, then why didn't the devil have me speak in tongues all the years I served him? I served the devil for years and he never gave me tongues. <laughs> but the same God that filled me with the uh, uh, salvation, filled, put his spirit in me, made, caused me to be baptized into Christ, that same spirit filled me with the Holy Ghost, gave me utterance in a new heavenly prayer tongue. Like the Apostle Paul said, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than y'all. You know, I'm, one of these days I want to teach on this. I want to show you all the different scriptures because there's been so much confusion about this subject, about speaking in tongues, because Paul talked about um, the gift of tongues that's used in the church where somebody actually gives a tongue and then somebody gives an interpretation. And then Paul talked about a tongue where he prayed in his natural tongue, but he also prayed in uh, heavenly tongues. And there's misunderstanding there. And people have tried to say, and people that are against tongues, which I used to be one of them, so I can relate. But uh, people that say, well, they spoke in tongues, that, was, that, was, that meant they were speaking in other, other languages that they didn't know. Hmm, so you think that's what Paul meant here. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in another language of some other country you don't know. Man, that's really going to build you up on your holy faith. That's, that's ridiculous. But anyway, we'll just go on. We, I, I do want to get back to that subject another time. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So here in verse 3, Jude warns us to contend. Look what it says, contend earnestly for the faith. That's not passive, when it says contend earnestly, that is not passively sitting around and waiting to see, you know, what am I going to do in life and what's going to happen in life? No, contend earnestly. The word earnestly, it means serious in intention, purpose, and effort. Serious in intention, purpose, and effort. Kind of sounds like uh, the, the verb that faith really is that we've been talking about in previous programs. And then the word contend means to strive in rivalry. 
or uh, to compete like you would compete in some competition. That kind of reminds me of what the Apostle Paul said in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25 when he said, you're running a race, so w run to win the prize. That's the type of contend earnestly we're talking about. So Jude goes on here then in verses 20 and 21, build up yourselves on your most holy faith by praying in the Spirit, and that will help keep you operating in the love of God. And of course, we, uh, most of us know that it's God's love that causes faith to work. Faith wouldn't have worked if we, God wouldn't have loved us. So, and we're going to talk about that more soon, so hang on, uh, whether this program or future program, we're going to get to that, uh, how faith actually works. So if we're going to contend, contend for the faith, then we are going to have to perfect our faith. Remember the last couple of programs we talked about that? So to perfect your faith, um, you have to be a, what I would call a learner. A, a student of the Bible, you have to increase in the knowledge of wisdom in God. So that means you're going to have to humble yourself. In fact, in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, it says in verse 5 at the end of the verse that God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So God gives grace. God gives what to the humble? Grace to the humble. And how is grace received? Well, remember Ephesians uh, 2.8, for by grace are you saved through faith. So if faith receives grace and grace flows to the humble, then humbling ourselves is an action of faith. <laughs> it takes faith to, to receive grace. And he says, humble yourselves, then humbling ourselves is an act of faith. So here's what humility says. And this, I wrote this down. I wrote down this just so I could read it to you. This is what I say to myself and what I decide, okay, I'm going to humble myself. This is what I wrote down. Listen, I only see in part and I, I only know in part. In other words, I'm not a know-it-all. I do not know everything. I don't know everything that you know. You don't know everything I know. I don't know everything every other preacher knows. They don't know everything I know. We need each other. I only, see, I only see in part and I only know in part. And as I hear the word of God, I am going to have the eyes of my understanding opened. I am going to be filled with the knowledge of God's word for my life. This is how I approach the word. I don't care if I'm hearing somebody preach a scripture the 3,000th time. I'm going to be filled with the knowledge of God's will for my life. The Holy Spirit is going to bring things to my remembrance. He is going to teach me things that I don't yet comprehend. He is going to show me things to come. And he's going to stir me up to believe better and to believe bigger. I'm going to believe for big things. And with that type of mon mindset, then you're ready to do what Paul said over in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's just turn over there. I think we have time to read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 5 that says, Examine yourselves whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. Um, let me read this from, that was the New King James. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know that Jesus is in you? Let me read a couple of the translations. This is so good. The Good News Bible says, put yourselves to the test and judge yourselves to find out whether you are living in faith. Uh, the New Living says, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Listen, what turned me off to Christianity and at 22 years of age, I almost walked away from God forever until I got in a good church that started teaching the kind of stuff we're teaching on this TV program where I found out, wow, Jesus is alive and he really cares about me in the suite here and now. And he's made every provision for me spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, maritally, socially, in every way. I can be whole and complete and healthy and rich and wise and full of love and joy and peace. And that changed everything because uh, I started seeing that my faith wasn't genuine and, and most people that I was observing wasn't genuine. So I had to examine and I, I examined other people's faith and their faith wasn't genuine. Uh, the uh, International Standard Version says, keep examining yourselves, keep examining yourselves to whether you are continuing in the faith. 
the Amplified says, examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing the proper fruits of it. The message translation says this way, test yourselves to, to make sure you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. You need firsthand evidence, not mere hearsay, that Jesus is in you. Test it out. And if you fail the test, do something about it. Boy, that's a, that's a good translation, that message right there. All these translations are good. But that one just, man, test yourself. Put yourself to the test. And if you test it out and fail the test, then do something about it. That's the purpose of why we're studying this and why we're, we're talk, calling this Believe for Great Things. All right, we're out of time. We'll pick up your next program. But I'll tell you, we're going to have a great week, aren't we? Just getting back into the Word of God and continuing to inspire our faith to believe for better, better and bigger things. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for helping us financially and partnering with, the, uh, with us. And thank you for sharing the program with others. We love you. Call you blessed. Have a Jesus-filled day. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. With your own words, you can release the power of life that will bring health to your body. God's healing grace is released through faith, and faith is released through what you say. Your healing is in your mouth. God wants you to be whole, well, and healthy. But if you have not heard his word on it, how can you have faith to call on him as your healer? These 52 Declare It cards have a healing scripture from God's word on one side and a corresponding declaration of faith which you can speak about yourself on the other. Hearing God's word concerning your healing will build your faith to walk through life in complete confidence that every sickness or disease that ever attacks you must depart. To order your prescription for health declare it cards, go to LarryHutton.org or call us at 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.